This is my Ender 3 3D printer. It's a rather cheap and popular 3D printer for beginners and experienced alike. This is also my first 3D printer, purchasing it around a year ago. Many successful and failed prints have been produced. The Ender 3 is capable of detailed prints large and small, but after all these prints, I still wonder how the printer would work under extreme speeds. And I'm not talking about the setting of the printer to be the, at the speed of 200%, 500%, or 700%. I'm talking about the max speed of 999%. By the end of this video, we will know if you could or even should print a detailed piece at the speed of 10 times the normal. To test this experiment, we'll use the Benchy. It is a popular 3D model that has gathered enthusiasts alike. As Wikipedia puts it briefly, the Benchy is often used to test and benchmark 3D printers when they are reviewed, as the model includes a number of difficult to print features including symmetry, overhanging curved surfaces, smooth surfaces, etc. We'll print the Benchy at a normal speed of 100% in white filament and another Benchy at 999% in orange filament and then we'll compare the two. According to my slicer, the bench will take about an hour and 44 minutes to print. So today, I wanted to time my printer and give it a rough time spent on printing the benchy and then we can compare the two prints. It won't be super accurate, but you'll definitely get a rough idea of how long the printer took to print the benchy. First off, let's just print the normal benchy at a speed of 100% in white filament. As you can see, as my printer is lining up, the speed isn't super fast. So in the previous recording that you just saw, as you guys can see, I did not remove the right strip from the print bed from the previous print. So it wasn't a very accurate representation of how the printer usually prints a white strip at 100%. But this time I did. I want you guys to remember what it looks like because we will be able to compare it later on. Here is the printer starting to actually print the Benchy and this will give you a really good idea of the regular speed that it's usually print at and that most people usually print at. And this will be very important later on when we do print the other Benchy and it's going to be super fascinating. At this time of recording, the print has been going on for over around 40 seconds or so. And look at the screen, it has not yet reached 1%, it is still at 0%. Keep this in mind, it will become very important later on.
For reference, this is what the strip looked like. As you can see, I was a little bit concerned in the beginning, quite different from the other one. As you can hear on the shock of my voice, which you can barely hear actually, I was very shocked at how fast this print was going. It was going very fast. I want you guys to look at the screen here and look how fast it went from 0 to 1% in just a matter of a few seconds as the print started. Alright, so now both of the Benjis are finished printing. Let's start by analyzing this one right here. I think this one turned out really good, and for this being my first Benji ever printed, I'm quite proud of it. There's not a lot of concerning features with this Benji, although there are a few things that kind of make it not perfect. Firstly, this Benji took about an hour and 34 minutes to print. Which I have to say is pretty close to the hour and 44 minutes that my slicer had predicted. But now, let's get on to the flaws. So despite this Benchy overall being very smooth, there is one area that isn't super smooth. As you can see here, this side of the Benchy is quite rugged. Now, I'm not too sure why this is happening, but I want to predict that this is because this is where the layer starts and ends, and this is why it's so rugged. Not only has this been happening with my Benchy, but with my other prints as well, so maybe it's just a printer issue. The layers on this part of the Benchy are also a little bit off. As for the lettering on this Benchy, as you can see, it's quite hard to see. The lettering on the bottom of the Benchy is even harder due to the faintness of it. The next Benchy, which we printed at the max speed, actually came out better than expected, although there are a few things I would say need improvement. First of all, this Benji finished printing in an hour and 7 minutes, which is around 30 minutes earlier than the other Benji. And now let's go to the flaws. Just like the other Benji, as you can see from this clip, there is a rugged area. I don't know if this is just a placebo, but it does feel like one side of this Benji isn't as smooth as the other Benji. As this clip shows, the arcs and some other curved areas just aren't as smooth as this other Benji right here. The top part of this Benchy is also very uneven, as you can see here. It's kind of just a blob of plastic on one side. This part here is a little bit wonky, but it's pretty unnoticeable. The text here is harder to read than the other one. The text on the bottom isn't that bad, actually. There is some stringing, but it's not anything crazy. And here is just a fun little side-by-side -side comparison of the speeds of the two prints. So now I'm going to answer the question, should you actually print 10 times the normal speed? Well, as you already know, 
The time that I was spent printing both of them, the time difference wasn't that large. In fact, it was just a difference of 30 minutes. As you may already notice, the one printed 10 times the normal speed has some quality difference than the other one. So I'd say if you're aiming to print something that you want to be detailed, perfect, and crisp, then probably don't do it. But if you're in a rush and you need all the time that you can get, then I say give it a shot. But I do want you guys to remember that factors like filament, printer settings, and printer all determine the print. So keep that in mind. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys did, please subscribe. This video took me quite a while to make printing, editing, and analyzing. So yeah, we're really close to 20 subscribers. In fact, we're just one subscriber away. So if you can hit that subscribe button, that'd be really appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.